Hello. Um, I have to say that I'm altogether daunted and humbled because, in a sense, my tale is a very slight one at this point. <laughs> one never knows what happens tomorrow. I've discovered that over the last couple of years. But the, I hope tonight <clears throat> what I... Well, and, and because I, I understand that so many people here have been through so much and there are so many people here tonight who have been very expert. And journalists tend to think that they're the most important people in the world and what they say is the most important thing that can be said. And the reality is, as you sit here and listen to what people are doing in the field of the treatment of melanoma, um, it truly is very, very humbling. And to understand the depth of that expertise that then hopefully gets applied to us as patients. But, but really all I want to do is tell you, in a sense, a very simple story tonight that I, I hope will be useful in some way. Because I think that there are many dimensions to disease, um, in, in my humble opinion. The story starts like this. There's a phone call three days after Christmas at my house. And I say, yes, um, Mark Bannerman here. And, um, the voice at the other end says, look, it's Dr. Giddy here. Um, I'm afraid we've sent away the, uh, the mole, as you know, and um, uh, it's a melanoma. Sorry, old boy. And you can imagine at that moment, three days after Christmas, <laughs> you're thinking, I'd rather have had another gift than this. <laughs> but the reality is that's, that's the way it went. And the bottom kind of falls out of your world. And I'm sure there's a, any number of you here who at some level have experienced something like that. And it's, it's almost a cliche to say that a million things run through your mind. They do. And yet at another level, there is nothing in your mind. Everything has gone absolutely blank. And you kind of stop hearing things at this point, which is really dangerous because what this person at the other end of the phone is telling you are some of the most important things you're ever going to want to hear. So at this point, I say, right, OK, what's it mean? And he says, well, you know, you've got a stage one, level two, you've dodged a bullet, old boy. And I'm thinking, I've dodged a bullet, I've got melanoma, what? Now, of course, I've got no concept, although I've been going to dermatologists for well nigh on 30 years because I surf. I grew up in the 60s and 70s on the northern beaches, goodness help me. And I know that I'm at risk. But when somebody finally says that thing to you and your world just falls apart, you kind of, you realise that you never really have done your homework about this thing that you could be burdened with, that could kill you. And then he says to me, well, look, I've booked you into the Melanoma Institute of Australia. And I think, well, that, that's a good start. And he said, you're going to have to have the margins done. And, um, uh, and I'm sort of thinking, well, you know, what else can I ask? What else can I ask? And, and he says, you know, this is all pretty good news for you. And I'm still thinking, why? <laughs> because I just don't really understand any of this. And then he says, well, you're going to have to go to the Melanoma Institute. They're going to do more pathology to check that the first lot of pathology was right. And then you're going to have the margins increased. And so immediately I think, oh, my God. And then I said, what surgery? More surgery. And it was on my neck. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, how big? All those things go through your head. And then he says, now, look, mate, I've got a, you know, and I know this guy pretty well. He said, mate, I've got a waiting room full of people here. And I've got to go. Clunk. So there I am. And so I'm sitting there thinking, whoa. I turn to my wife, Sharon, and I say, it's come back positive. I've got a melanoma. And she said, oh. So straight away we went to Dr. Google. And that can be a bad thing to do when you haven't been really listening to what's being told to you. And, and so I say, oh, like, I think it's a stage one level two. And she starts to Google and she comes up and, and she says, I think you mean it's a, it's a stage two. And I think, well, maybe that's what he did say. But, but, you know, I've told you already, I'm not really listening to this. 
even though I'm a journalist and I'm supposed to listen to everything everybody says to me and write it down, but I didn't. And so I start reading about what a stage two is and I start freaking out. Now, at this point, I don't even know when I'm going to have the excision. I don't even know where I'm going. I don't know who I'm going to. I haven't got the pathology report to check up whether the Dr. Google, if I'm Googling Dr. Google right or whether I'm Googling him wrong. So there I am. And it's three days after Christmas. <laughs> so at this point, I haven't done many things right, really. I haven't asked enough questions. But in my head, like a sort of a, a you know, and I've done a lot of sailing in my life, um, which may have contributed to my situation, um, I was looking for a life preserver. And I kind of knew that I had to reach out to somebody because I'd read the research that says when you've got a melanoma, if you can get involved in an encounter group, when, if you can go to any kind of therapy and talk about this thing, if you can talk about this, the chances of success down the road in the treatment of it are going to be much better. So I start ringing anyone that I can find and the good news was that I ring Melanoma Patients Australia and very rapidly, even at that time of the year, Nita Murray rings me back. Now, Nita did a couple of things that I think are really important. One, she said, tell me what the pathology report says. And I said, well, I don't have a pathology report. And she said, OK, ring the doctor, send it, get him to send it to you, then send it to me, which I did. And the next thing she did was listen. Listen to this incoherent, terrified person at the end of the line who really didn't know what it was he had or was being told and what the consequences were. But she listened. And it would, you know, to, to the day I die, whenever that is, I will thank her for listening that day. It really was fantastic. And in that moment, when she then went through the pathology report a little later in the day and called me back, just because of her expertise and her compassion, she gave me back three weeks of my life in many senses. Because it was three weeks later that I had the excision. And had I not spoken to her, I'm not sure that I wouldn't have gone up to the cliff at the end of the street and jumped off into the ocean that I so dearly loved. But the next thing she said to me was even more important is that you can talk to me, but you've got to get professional help. She sensed that I was really needing help. And so I did. And I've been advising people all their life when I do stories about um, mental illness to get somebody, you know, to say, I need help. And so I reached out to a, a therapist and I went and that became very confronting for me because I had love, I loved the ocean I, I, and I love being out of doors and I love surfing and the happiest times in my life have been with my family near the ocean. All the families that I've had over my life, as in my parents and everyone else. And so I had to confront the possibility, as I said to the therapist, I, I can't go out in the sun anymore. My life's gone. And, she, you know, she counselled me about this and she said, well, you know, you could go out early in the morning. Don't be so ridiculous. I mean, a lot of the damage has been done, blah, 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 blah. But she talked me through and she made me realise that, that, in fact, there, there may have been other elements to my life that I had actually <coughs> been ignoring and that obsessing about, you know, going surfing or doing this or going sailing or being outdoors or doing something else was obscuring me to that maybe I had another, you know, and I don't mean a higher purpose. Maybe there were elements of my life that, you know, in my semi-retirement I couldn't just lie around and be a beach bum. And in a sense that therapy said, no, there, there, there could be something more and better for you in the future if you survive all this. So Nita, in advising me to do what I did, again, I have to thank her because she was that wise, 
not dispassionate, but objective counsel. And, and that, you know, that is what she gave me, and I really, really appreciate it. And, and I think anybody in that kind of circumstance could benefit from that kind of thing. And yet those kinds of services, I, I think, in, in our society, are neglected. The, the whole notion of the psychological element of disease or ailments, the way we feel is so important to the way we will react to any kind of therapy or the way we will live our lives. And, and so that's the sort of situation that I came to. Now, you know, I went off and had the excision and I, I you know, I had a good, they explained to me that I had a good chance of survival and you know, I'm still kicking at this point and that's, that's fantastic. And I, but I suppose along the way, first of all, I realised that in suggesting to do what I had done, that is go and seek help, that I had learned something about myself which is really important. But I also learned something really important, I think, about the process of, of medical, uh, or the treatment of melanoma in some ways. But, but it relates in, in a broader sense to the treatment of all kinds of conditions and diseases. And, and it relates to the medical process, if you like. Because it, it seems to me that in the past, most of my grandparents popped off at around 70 years of age. So, you know, I'm 66. And so really, a, a lot of them never really got to the point where melanoma or, late, you know, later in life melanoma or, you know, dementia or many of the other conditions that can now be treated by modern medicine, they just died early in their life. But it seems to me that modern medicine now um, and public health campaigns are allowing us to live longer and be treated and to go on, you know, much, much later in life. But, but the truth is, with those kinds of advances also comes a lot of complications in terms of the way you as a patient have to try and understand your conditions, condition and, and the, the treatments that are available. So we've got medicine becoming much more complex. As a patient, you've got to try and understand what you've got and what the options are for you. Now, in the very basic form of melanoma that I had, I guess you could say, um, Nita helped me navigate that. But the reality is, it, you know, I, I, I have sat here tonight and listened to expert opinion about the way we can treat melanoma. And at one level, it's very heartening, but another level, it's almost terrifying to me as a non-expert because you, you've got to try and understand what those options are, and it's quite confronting. So here we have a situation where people are living longer because of better treatment of a whole range of conditions, and it seems to me we have doctors who are better educated, better informed, but I have to say in my experience, not so much in relation to melanoma, but to many other conditions that I have had and been to doctors for, it doesn't necessarily mean those doctors are better at navigating the emotional territory that comes with illness. And so it seems to me from my experience, and you know, and I say this very humbly, and I, I think that doctors have so much to get their heads around in terms of the techniques that they can use and the science that they apply to these conditions. And they also have so many demands in, in terms of Medicare and the medical system that they work in, which demands so much of them, that there seems to be the need for a well-funded second tier that deals with guiding you through <laughs> any kind of illness that you have and the treatment that goes with it. And when I heard that there was the possibility of 
melanoma patients of Australia and the Melanoma Institute of Australia coming together to harness those kinds of second tier activities that help your understanding of your condition and try and help you to come to terms with the psychology of your situation and your condition, I thought, wow, that's fantastic. Because we need that. We need so much more of that. And, and it seems to me that the way you feel is really important to the way you will respond to your condition and your treatment. I, I can't prove that. I know for a long time people have looking at, been looking at the association between what's in your head and what your body does. But it just seems to me logical that if you're in a better place psychologically, you're going to be in a better place to combat the condition you've got. And without wanting to mention the elephant in the room, it seems to me that even if nature takes its course, and the disease takes you, or the condition takes you, the reality is, if on the way, you have learnt something about yourself, and you can face that with calmness and equanimity, because, because the truth is, we are all going to die, then it seems to me that too is incredibly valuable. If all we're about is being cured, then I think that's only half of the equation. The other thing that we never seem to want to talk about is, well, let's, we only have today, let's make the day that we have good. Now, if anything can be done to create that second tier that helps us deal with those really thorny questions about how do we treat this, how much time have I got left, but how do I live a good life in the time I have left or die a good death? I think that is an incredible thing to happen. And I think that medicine needs it. And I think we all need it. And I think doctors know that that ultimately would be a very satisfactory outcome. And that's really what I wanted to say tonight. I, I hope that resonates with you. You might think I'm talking total nonsense, but that is where I've kind of come to on that journey. And, and I hope in some way it opens up a kind of discussion. Thank you. Thank you.